it never ends. Another young black man has been killed by police. This time, 19-year-old Tony Robinson from Madison, Wisconsin. He was killed at about 6.30 p.m. by police. Police say that they were responding to a report of a young man jumping in and out of traffic that was causing a safety concern. The police chief, Michael Koval, claimed that the officer followed the young man to his apartment and then forced his way in because he said he heard a disturbance. Once inside the apartment, the officers claimed that there was a fight which caused him to open fire on the man. Koval said the officer quickly began administrating first aid, as did other officers who eventually arrived at the scene. Despite their efforts, the young man died at a local hospital. Police did not reveal the name of the victim, however, the victim's family has come forward saying that he was Tony Robinson, a recent graduate, a 2014 graduate of Sun Prairie High School, according to the Wisconsin Journal. According to police, Robinson was suspected in a recent assault and battery. Their initial investigation at the scene did not reflect a gun or anything of that nature that would have been used by the subject. The call was updated by another complainant who had indicated that this same subject had been responsible for a battery that had been recently committed. Upon arrival, uh, the officer, the first responding unit, was called to the apartment where the subject had gone into. Uh, he heard sounds of what sounded like a disturbance coming from within the home, and it was at that juncture that he forced entry. Once inside the home, uh, the subject uh, involved in this incident, the same one that had been allegedly out in traffic and had battered someone. This same subject then uh, assaulted my officer and uh, in the context of mutual combat in that sense, um, the officer did draw his uh, revolver and subsequently shot the subject. Immediately thereafter, uh, the officer began immediately to render aid by providing CPR and was subsequently joined by backups who also carried on that struggle. The subject was subsequently conveyed to a local area hospital where he did succumb to his gunshot wounds and is deceased. Is it as far as what happened with your officers when you say anything about any weapons used by the subject or anything like that? At this point, it is unknown what, if anything, he had in terms of instrumentalities. Uh, the initial um, findings at the scene did not reflect a gun or anything of that nature that would have been used by the subject. No. The Department of Justice Criminal Investigation is already underway conducting an investigation of the killing. Uh, this has become normal procedure when a law was passed in 2014 that's saying anytime there is a police homicide, it must be investigated by an independent third party. This is the third time such a thing has happened since the law was put into place. Immediately following the death of the young man, about 100 activists gathered who where the killing took place. Protesters chanted Black Lives Matter while conducting prayers and playing drums. Robinson's aunt Lorraine Carter described him as a gentle and she said uh, he didn't deserve to be killed. The best friend of Robinson, Jack Spaulding, said he was one of the happiest people I know. The victim's grandmother gave an impromptu speech in which she was unable to keep her composure. Together we're strong. Peaceful people, but stand tall and firm and don't let this happen anymore. They ain't got that kind of right. They don't. I don't I... Oh my God, I killed my grandson. <laughs> I want you guys to take this opportunity. I want you to take this opportunity to understand and connect with the family, with their hearts. A black teenager, a black boy, was viciously, viciously killed and murdered by Madison Police Department. We have been marching in the streets. We have been saying over and over again to anybody that will listen that if the racial disparities and the mass incarceration of our boys and our young people are not pro proactively and radically challenged, then we will have a Ferguson in Madison. We do have a Ferguson in Madison. Our, our page is Ferguson to Madison, young, gifted, and black. Ferguson to Madison. Because we understood having our numbers three times as worse as Ferguson will put us in this place. We knew it. Right. What the fuck else was the next step? Uh -huh. You lock us up? 
You beat us, you profile us, you harass us. We're in jail, arrested to a, a, a rate of eight to one. They fear our very existence. And now you have a, a auntie here in pain, a family broken, broken. His mother needed him. His family needed him. Just like every family needs their black boys and their brown boys and their young girls and their young women. And we, in the state, what do they do? They strip our families apart and leave us without shit and then turn around and tell us that we're responsible for our own predicaments. I'm tired of hearing the bullshit. You should be tired too. We are. You should be tired too. All right now. We can no longer allow state violence to be accepted as normal. We can no longer allow the status quo to be fucking injustice. And I said fucking because I'm mad. Right, right. You got a mother who has to bury her baby. I have babies this age. This happens at a very appropriate time. Right now, U.S. President Barack Obama is getting set to commemorate 50 years of civil rights struggle in the United States. This incident, along with the many, many killings there have been of young black men just in this year alone, shows that this tremendous divide between black and white Americans is just as wide as it's been in any recent memory. All of the struggles that were fought for during the civil rights era. It is very clear from this in many past instances that this gap remains still to be closed. That there's still a great divide between black and white America. And we can definitely see this from news media coverage whenever it happens. They often, the media often makes excuses for the police. Uh, does a lot of victim blaming. And this comes often from white society itself making these same accusations. But again, we are reminded here in this instance one more that there is still a great divide between black and white Americans. And much of the struggle for equality between these two sides, a lot of it still needs to be fought and will probably be fought for a very long time to come. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of them, then head over to my Patreon page and show your support. Or you can go to the MRN bookstore and check out some of the latest books available. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share on various social media.